Chris Hansen does not view himself as a YouTuber. He views YouTube as a stepping stone to get to the next level of his career. Notice how he says to get to the next level of his career. This is a very interesting thing coming out of this guy's mouth because like, are you trying to criticize Chris Hansen? Are you defending him in a weird way? Because it kind of sets it up in the way of it actually defending him with what comes next. But I do want to point out that he said it's a stepping stone. YouTube is a stepping stone for Chris Hansen's career, not for it to be a stepping stone for him to elevate a story that he's deeply passionate and cares about and just wants justice for the victims. And he's using YouTube as a stepping stone to the next level of helping people. No, no, it's a stepping stone for his career. Television has the potential to take this to a wider audience and to increase the potential that we will see justice. It's so hard for me to listen to him say things like this because in the back of my mind I know that the alleged victims ask him not to include their likeness, their story, nothing. Please stop pretending like you're doing this for literally anybody else but you. Hey guys, what's up? It's Randomizer here. Today we're going to be talking about a um a TV personality, you would call him. He uh, he is known he was known on TV for catching um chi child predators, uh, famously known for catching child predators on TV a long time ago. His name is Chris Hansen, and that's who we're, that is who we are going to be talking about in today's video. He was once really popular um, in the in the early days, like back in the early 2000s, because of his show called To Catch a Predator. Chris Hansen was the star of that, and he was doing very well, and he was very popular, um, and his show was doing very well. However, um, over the years, Chris um, To Catch a Predator ended up being canceled, and Chris Hansen would slowly flatline into obscurity, and. Um, Today we're going to talk about how he did and um, how his career ended up fizzling out and how he over and how his career overall died. And today in this video, we're going to be talking about the rise and fall of Chris Hansen. So hopefully you all enjoy this one. Christopher Hansen was born on September 13th of 1959, which makes him 62 years old today. During Hansen's senior year at Michigan State University, um, he was able to get his um, he was able to get his first job at uh, the National Broadcasting Company as a journalist, <laughs> working for the National Broadcasting Company. He then, um, as as we're going to say for the purpose of this video, he then would move on from uh, Michigan State University and eventually uh, c continue his journalism career, and then. Um, and then he began working for Dateline NBC, and that's when he got his own show. Um, it was called To Catch a Predator, which started on November 11th of 2004. <laughs> Less than a year before I was born. How crazy. Anyways, nobody cares. Moving on. So basically, what the show To Catch a Predator, um, what that show was like is that um, basically... Um, Hansen would do this like investigation. He would try and catch, um, he would try and catch, uh, a, a usually a grown man. He, he would try and catch him talking online to an underage female, an underage woman. So, um, so for example, what Chris Hansen would do is that he would try and find a child predator. He would, um, he and his team, that were um, running behind the scenes in this show. His his team and him would create. Um, they would pose as a thirteen year old girl online, and they would see if, um, or they would. Um, they, first of all, they would do research on a guy that they suspected was a predator. Then they would pose as a um, as a thirteen year old or someone under the age of eighteen. They'd pose as. Um, a girl that's under the age of 18 online and they would pose as them and see if the guy that was suspected of being the predator would talk in it. Like they basically, basically sexed the, um, the underage girl online, the decoy, though. the underage girls, though, 
quote, un, uh, quote unquote, underage um, females that um, that these adults were um, sexting online. Those were decoys created by um, th those were fake accounts created by Chris Hansen and it, and it, uh, his team trying to catch a child predator. Hopefully that makes sense. So basically, he would try and uh, he would then talk to these uh, fake underage girls on, or he would have these guys talk to these fake underage girls online to see if they were a predator or not. And then Chris Hansen would trick those um, adult men that were the predators. Um, he would trick them into meeting up at a certain location at a locate at a house that Chris Hansen, Chris Hansen and his team would rent out. And then he'd trick them into uh, coming over there. And then Chris Hansen would then, uh, once the predator was inside the house, he would then, uh, Chris Hansen himself would then confront that guy and, um, you know, confront him about the text that he sent to the, the text that he sent to the decoy and all, all that other stuff. And basically explain basically exposing him for doing something really inappropriate with an underage person. And then at the end, when the predator leaves, police, but police guard the front door and then the predator gets arrested and prosecuted and possibly thrown in jail if, you know, the evidence is conclusive. It's basically like a, a big FBI open up thing. <clears throat> Sorry, my bad. Um, it's not really like an FBI open up, but basically, once the predator talks to Chris Hansen, then when he decides that he's done and he wants to leave the house, police are secretly behind the door waiting to burst out and arrest the guy. And and yes, hopefully, hopefully everything, hopefully everything that I just explained there um made sense to you guys. I'll actually I'll even show a clip from the show right now. So. So basically, um, y'all could see what it's about and that y'all know what I'm talking about before I move on. Just, just take a look at this yourself. A little sample uh, of what the show, um, of what the show is all about. Just take a look right here. It's Saturday night in the Connecticut suburbs. Autumn is in the air. And this guy is bringing pizza to the door. Jeff Sokol is no pizza delivery man. Cops say he's here to meet a 13-year-old girl. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Sokol drove all the way from Boston to our sting house in Fairfield, Connecticut. What he doesn't know is that we've placed more than a dozen hidden cameras all over the property. His date with a 13-year-old is going to be on national TV. On Sokol's LinkedIn page, he calls himself Master of Puppets possibly a reference to a famous heavy metal song. He says he graduated from the University of Massachusetts Amherst with a degree in management. He worked in the insurance industry as an auditor, but he says he now drives for Lyft, the ride-sharing service. We're working with the cooperation of the Fairfield Police and the online watchdog group Tetrid Corps. Tetrid posts pictures of actual 13-year-olds on social media. We're hiding their identities. It's not The only way police would know if we ever got intimate is if someone saw us together or you told the police. Not by me. Blank that. Well, tonight, intimacy is not on the menu. In fact, dinner is delayed. Sokol is late because he says his pipes sprung a leak. Hello? Hey, what's up? He thinks he's calling Bailey to tell her he's late, but he's actually speaking to Lori from Tetrid in our virtual control room. Did your plumber get there yet? It's not. It's late. Finally, his plumbing repaired, Sokol heads down I-95 for Connecticut. He picks up a pizza and asks Bailey about what to wash it down with. You got booze? My mom has some vodka, but no rum. Sokol arrives at the house. Our on-site decoy, a 19-year-old theater student, lets him in the door. <laughs> Sorry about that. Come on in. Good, how are you? Good. Do you find the house okay? No, because it's really dark out. So. Oh. That's a long drive. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> sorry, I'm really nervous. Oh, you're going to give me a hug? No, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. I'm just... Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'll settle into it.
Do you want me to check? No. What kind of pizza do we have tonight? Who's this? I'll get to that in a minute. Who are you? Who are you? You tell me first. You're Jeff, right? Yeah. And what are you doing here tonight, Jeff? Hanging out. Hanging out with whom? With her. Who's her? I, I, I want to know who you are. I want to know a little bit more about you first. Can I eat first? Sure, go ahead. He's so relaxed and convinced of his innocence, he eats a slice of pizza. Tell me who you are, is, you know, I didn't know there would be other people here. Well, what did you expect to happen here tonight, Jeff? Didn't have any expectations. No expectations whatsoever? No. So you drove two and a half hours? Sure did. From the front with you on Saturday. Now you're, you're making me nervous and... You're 44 years old, right? Mm-hmm. Right. As a 44-year-old guy, I shouldn't be talking to 13-year-old girls like this. Yet I want to. What am I supposed to make of that? Are you sure? Okay, I could be there Saturday afternoon. Explain. So Explain I, it to me. Just wanted to come hang out and it looks like here you wanted to come here and have sex with a thirteen year old girl. Okay. Is there is that against the law to like to, to meet have sex with a thirteen year old girl when you're forty four? Yes, no, it's against meet, the law. To meet to meet a girl. That's all I've done. You see how this looks. Okay, but 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 do you also as long as you're under 16, age of consent. Right. Sorry, I'm really nervous. Oh, you're going to give me a hug? No. We'll be in jail. Come on out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Cops grab him. During the search, cops find a enhancement pill, the kind where you call a doctor if it's still working after four hours. Have a seat slider for the passenger side, please. Okay, guys. Um, sorry if that whole clip there um, was kind of long. I, I kind of had to condense it. And, and edit it down into what y'all just saw there. That little that little five minute clip there. That that all or no that whole twenty minute video is now condensed into five minutes. Um, but but hopefully y'all get the point now and and overall get um, and have a picture of what this show was like. And uh, so yes, they basically um, Chris Hansen would basically catch predators that were preying on young girls or just young children overall that were under the age of 18. And um, he did this, um, he, as I, yeah, obviously, as I said in this video, he, he, start, he started doing this show in 2004. And throughout, throughout the years, 2005, uh, 2005, 2006, and 2007, uh, the show ran flawlessly with really out any issues. The show was uh, very entertaining to viewers. Hanson overall seemed like he was doing um, a good, th at the time, it seemed like he was doing a good thing for the for the world and, and for the community by getting rid of these dirt bags, getting them off the streets, basically. And, he was, and it was being documented on Dateline NBC. Um, and overall, it was not only very entertaining for viewers to watch, but it seemed like a very good and wise act being done, being depicted uh, in, in each and each and every one of these episodes um, being filmed, you, you know, being filmed and documented. Overall, everything seemed good for him. However, as more as more and more of these episodes uh, began being created and and um, put out on air, like as more and more of these episodes began being broadcasted to television uh, on Dateline NBC, um, what I'm saying is, uh, as the show continued uh, fr from from approximately 2008 to 2009, things just began to feel off and unpleasant about the show. First of all, the way they were conducting these guys. Sure, they were exposing them and, you know, they're being, um, overall, these predators were being exposed for the people that they really were. Like, now you understood the type of person that that guy really was talking to that decoy, the way, the way he talked to her or him or whatever. So, so at first, it seemed like a good, good, courageous act to expose these guys. However, 
how are they exactly being prosecuted? How is the evidence behind the scenes being handled? And overall, like, is it really right to document this type of sensitive stuff out there? That's what a lot of people began to question about the show. The show is now being put in question at this point because overall, it just it just seemed like seemed like the way that um, that that Hanson and his team were conducting these investigations, they seemed pretty out there. Um, they seemed pretty extreme and overall a little bit rushed and aggressive and not exactly, you know, something that a normal person trying to do a good act would do. And keep in mind, it was being documented on TV and Chris Hansen was making a lot of monies off of catching these guys. So it honestly, overall, the show now started, it started to rub people the wrong way. And the show now in 2010 uh, began to get worse, and um, and then and then uh, to catch a predator would then be canceled in late 2010 after a scandal happening um, involving a guy um, that they were that um, that Chris and his team were trying to catch. His name was Lewis Comrat Comrat. Sorry, his um. His last name there is is kind of hard to pronounce, but, you know, I tried my best. Like, his name is Lewis Comran, and this guy, uh, Hanson and his team were trying to catch, uh, they were trying to um, expose him for um, actions that he were doing, but, um, but as it turns out, this sting operation, this predator catch, would end in tragedy. It would end in a comrade committing suicide. 56-year-old district attorney Louis Conrad was one of the individuals caught by perverted justice. Conrad posed as a 19-year-old university student engaging in online chat with a boy, Luke, who he thought to be 13 years of age. Conrad attempted to solicit uh, images from the 13-year-old and things escalated when perverted justice hired an actor to play Luke over the phone. After the first few conversations, Conrad ceased on returning calls, and he abandoned all online chats with the boy for unknown reasons. He never showed up to the sting house. According to perverted justice members, content from Conrad's MySpace page began to disappear, leading them to believe up his tracks. The authorities to pursue a warrant for his arrest. Dayline NBC and Chris Hansen saw this opportunity to produce a piece of sensationalized TV and decided to show up to Conrad's house hours before any warrant was signed. But little did they know that this investigation would end in disaster. The Murphy police obtained an arrest warrant for Conrad and did something we've not seen before. They contacted the local authorities in Conrad's town and knocked on his door. Conrad didn't answer. But police said there were signs he was still inside, so a tactical team was called in. The officers lined up in formation, then broke through the back door. But before they could make the arrest, the assistant DA pulled out a gun and pointed it at his head. As they made entry, they confronted the suspect. I believe he's in the hallway, and he told them he wasn't going to hurt them, and then shot himself in the head. According to raw footage obtained by news publication Esquire, who did... In an interview with Esquire, Chris Hansen denied the crew members were on the private property. This was a lie. He also denied that perverted justice was present at the Conrad residence. This was a lie. Chris Hansen stated both in his blog and on air that Conrad's MySpace began to disappear. The fact of the matter is that he never even remembered seeing it and a later investigation by Esquire revealed that Conrad's page had not been touched for months before the sting another lie. Conrad's death increased criticism of the already controversial show significantly, with pieces in Rolling Stone and the previously mentioned $100 million lawsuit against NBC, calling it a mess from the point of journalism and that it created news rather than reporting it. The sister of Louis Conrad, Patricia Conrad, filed a $100 million lawsuit against NBC in July of 2007. And nine months later, the judge allowed So yeah, it's um it 
it's overall pretty disgusting and very concerning that um, that the poor man had to deal with all that um, d during when the whole police showed up and uh, when he was basically uh, FBI opened up. And uh, yeah, it's overall unfortunate what happened to the poor man. Sure, he was a child predator, and I under I completely understand that. And yes, he he did deserve to go to jail, but. He didn't deserve. He didn't deserve what he got. He shouldn't have died. They should have handled it more appropriately. And 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 yes, he might have died. He might have committed suicide, right? But don't don't lie about stuff afterwards. Just be professional and don't BS people when they ask you questions, which is unfortunately exactly what Chris Hansen and his team did. And it's quite unfortunate. And it and it does make sense why the sister of of this um of this Lewis person is suing um, Dateline NBC for what happened. Honestly, um, Chris Hansen, uh, he shouldn't have lied about the evidence. And um, overall, this whole thing shouldn't have gone down this way. I, I really wish that this Louis person um, were still alive. To, um, I wish he was still alive today and, you know, at least still in prison and not where he is, not where he is now, because at least, you know, his family members, you know, they, they, they never really got to see, um, the sister never really got to see her brother one last good time. It, unfortunately, it's really unfortunate that, uh, this happened to him and his family. So yes, that was Chris, that was, um, Chris Hansen's first biggest scandal right, right there. However, um, that wouldn't be the end of Hansen's show. What I mean by that is that in June of 2011, the final two de gras, pretty much for To Catch a Predator and for Chris Hansen on the National Broadcasting Company, it, it was when Hansen was exposed for cheating on his wife of 20 years. He was exposed for cheating on his wife with a woman. It, um, it was with a woman who was a Florida news reporter named Kristen Caddo. And she was 22 years younger than him, than Hanson. So, um, so Chris Hanson was having an affair with this woman that was 22 years younger than him behind his wife's back. And that, uh, that unfortunately rose up to the surface like a, um, like a pile of dog shit that has been burned into a big, into a big pile of ashes. It, it was basically like a burnt, a burnt piece of dog shit, um, that scandal rose up to the surface and led, pretty much led, um, Dateline NBC to cutting pr pretty much all ties with, um, with Hanson. And, um, so yes, he, so, to, so at this point, To Catch a Predator was no longer in production and Chris Hansen's TV career was, it was pretty, yeah, it was, it was over at this point. However, after that whole debacle happened, it, it pretty much, no, it did not stop at all Chris Hansen from trying to weasel his way back onto the spotlight, back onto TV. He was trying to weasel his way um, back onto television, and um, it, it, it kind of wasn't working. He needed to get more attention from people. So sometime in 2015, he created his YouTube channel, and on it, he... He made like an announcement video that he wanted to go back to catching predators like he did on To Catch a Predator. He wanted to do investigations on people to see um, if they were talking to if they were talking to underage. He wanted to do investigations on people to see if they were talking to underage people. Get, you know what I mean? Predators. So he announced that on his channel on his channel. He announced it on there. Depending on your level of involvement, you'll be rewarded with a variety of unique perks. From a personalized voicemail message from me, to a Hanson vs. Predator t-shirt, to an exclusive screening and background briefing event hosted by me and my crew. However, the people that put money into Chris's Kickstarter project, um, also known as backers, they were, they were Chris's backers. Um, his backers, 
never received never received any of the any of the rewards that uh, that Chris Hansen promised. All those re- all those rewards that were mentioned um, that were mentioned before this clip. You know the clip of uh, Chris Hansen talking about those rewards. Yeah, uh, people never got those. They've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And the whole and also the whole Kickstarter campaign went dark until February of 2016. And by that time, people as people have still not um, the <clears throat> they still not have. Re- Nobody has received their rewards yet, and it was February of 2016. And yeah, as I just said, nobody received their rewards yet at that time. In fact, you would think with all this money coming in through backers uh, donating to his his, uh, Kickstarter project, you'd think, oh, um, maybe he would uh, start doing an investigation, Um, you know, an investigation into a... However, um, that was not the case. In fact, in fact, he was not. Um, he has. He hasn't even uh, announced that he was doing an investigation at all yet. Uh, he never announced it, and um, so, so he. Yeah, he hasn't. Uh, he never announced and uh, that he would be doing an investigation. Uh, he would actually, you know, um, hold that off a lot. So, so it's basically more proof that he um, he pretty much scammed uh, his backers on Kickstarter. He scammed people on Kickstarter by blowing them off whenever they would whenever they would ask about um, when he was doing an investigation and when uh, he would actually start up a new episode of To Catch a Predator, which he promised so many times. He promised it throughout March all the way to May uh, at. So he promised it. Uh, he made many, uh, many videos announcing that he would do a new episode of To Catch a Pred from uh, like the beginning of March to the end of May. So over the course of over two months, he would ma- t- um, no over the course of two to three months, he would uh, create uh, these announcement videos saying that he would be doing a new investigation. But that would never happen. It was all cap. Um, he was basically scamming people. No, he was scamming people. But this could also be used as an indicator that uh, Chris Hansen, after he was uh, kicked off of NBC, his um, his career and money were definitely dying down. And he was honestly um, with this whole Kickstarter pitch. It was only it was uh, really only clear that uh, it, it was it really only <clears throat> became clear that he wanted. Um, money over actually catching these guys. That was basically his whole goal is money. Um, his car- and as you guys know, once your career gets fragile, your financials, um, because you, you know, because uh, Chris, uh, Chris's net worth was very high back in the day when he was doing To Catch a Predator, he was definitely making higher purchases. Um, meaning that when he got kicked off of NBC uh, and as he was trying to get back on television, his income was now questionable because he wasn't really making any more and his financial started to dip um, because he wasn't making any more income and he was spending. Does that make any sense? Basically, what I'm saying is that his income was dropping and his net worth was dropping and he wanted to get it back up by getting more money and the bet more money. <clears throat> and the best way to do that uh, was through a Kickstarter pitch and false promises. And he would leech off of those people that actually put money into this Kickstarter campaign, um, even though it, it it really was not real to begin with. And um, honestly, even though he did make some uh, make some money off of it, like he he made some money off of it, right? But he was still um, his company, his Kickstarter company that he was doing, and himself, he and the company, like they were still in debt. Chris Hansen was still in debt and his company, his Kickstarter company was still not doing that great. And he, he was still having money problems, um, which leads me to my next thing. I'm going to talk about another thing. Hansen was arrested in the summer of 2017. Um, look up on the screen right now, uh, to see why he was arrested. If you're not looking up on the screen right now, um, do so right now to see, uh, so you can see what he was arrested for. It is pretty clear now that that Chris 
uh, was definitely struggling with money at this point. Yeah. However, the saga with Chris Hansen only continues from there. You see, it was at the time that Onision was starting uh, was starting to become a big thing. Um, he was starting to become a big phenomenon, basically. The YouTuber Onision, um, also know his real his real life name is Greg, but um, he was starting to become a big thing. Uh, a lot of people um, began to make videos and watch videos on him being exposed for the person he truly was, for 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 him being a groomer. And for being a bad person to people that were uh, that were living with him at the time, and Chris Hansen being the clout chaser that he is at this point, you would now consider him a clout chaser and and a money grabber. But, but so Chris Hansen saw this opportunity to interview victims of um, of Onision. So an example being um, Shiloh Shiloh Hoganson. That, that's one example. Some other examples, I think, are Tina or Gina or Jacqueline. I have no idea the victims' names, but hopefully they're doing well nowadays. The point I'm making here is that Chris Hansen saw this as an opportunity uh, to grow his new... So now, so now at this point, he has a new channel with um that that and he has a new channel and his subscriber count is slowly starting to grow up again back back to the way it was, like, back to how it was on his old channel. And so Chris Hansen saw this, so he saw this Onision saga as an opportunity, so he decided to interview some victims uh, of Onision. He saw this as an opportunity to make some more money and get some more atten attention off of this. So he interviewed, he uh, interviewed the victims of um, uh, Onision and... He basically tried to interview Onision, but he wouldn't respond. He bas so basically, Hansen was really interviewing these um, victims, victims of Onision, because he he just wanted that attention, that that uh, that spicy YouTube clout and monies, right? He, he just wanted to make money off of the investigation and not really not really help out like he was saying to. He he even j just. Just for attention, Chris Hansen actually showed up to Onision's house, and Onision had to call the police on Chris Hansen because he was literally lurking. Chris Hansen was literally lurking unprofessionally outside with the camera crew. At um, now, I understand if you want to do uh, a sit-down interview with the predator like Onision, but that's kind of unprofessional to do. To just show up, bombard into somebody bombard onto somebody's property like that and point cameras at their house house and then they call the police and then uh they call the police on you in this case onision called the police on chris hansen and his camera crew and it was all big debacle and honestly onision did not consent to hansen uh, to just come over to his house like that. And I understand that, hey, you want to conduct an interview, but you got you got to really set up the interview uh, with the person that, you, you got to set up an interview with the person that you want to interview. So Hansen had to set up an interview, a proper one with Onision, to really get some information out of, uh, out of him, out of Onision. Sorry, I don't, I don't really want to repeat myself, but yeah, I kind of have to, so you guys get what I mean, but uh, Okay, now you do. So Hansen just unprofessionally bombarded into Onision's property and personal space, and that was really overall unprofessional and uncalled for. It just showed, um, it showed even more, even more that Chris Hansen was only in this for money and not money and not to actually help out with the um, with the investigation on Onision. Um, he didn't even want to. He barely even. Uh, investigated um, what Onision was doing. He didn't even look into him that he, Chris Hansen didn't even look into Onision that much. He didn't uh, really care. He he just wanted the money out of all of this. People people began to lose faith in Chris Hansen. People began to believe that Chris Hansen wasn't doing anything about this whole on Onision saga. People people believed now that he wasn't helping at all. Uh, really, with this investigation on Onision, people, you know, people began to lose faith in him. Uh, at faith, 
people began to lose faith in Chris Hansen is what I'm saying. And then he fully stopped with that. And and then after that whole thing happened, the documentary on Onision got released. It did feature Chris Hansen in it. And, and he got his time to talk in the documentary. And people talked about him. Uh, the people that were in the Onision documentary that were featured in it talked about Chris Hansen um, in, in a pretty negative way. Yeah, yes, in a negative way. People were talking about Hansen in the documentary. However... He he wasn't even done there, and ne and now I'm about to I'm about to showcase what happened after the Onis the Onision investigation. What Chris Hansen did next, um, because honestly he was not done there. He wanted to get even more money. Um, he 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 still didn't have enough money at, at all. So he still didn't have enough money. Well, you know, not completely. He still needed more money, is what I'm saying. But yeah, still need more of that. Yeah. So what he did. So the next couple things that he did next, I'm actually going to showcase a little summary on that by um, the lovely John Swan. So he's going to be explaining uh, the other scams, the other scams that Chris Hansen performed. And then um, we are going to uh, wrap this video up with um, with a little conclusion at the end and my thoughts on Chris Hansen nowadays. Uh, sorry if this video is getting kind of long. Don't worry. We're going to put it to a close soon. But now, um, but now I'm going to be showcasing the next couple things that Chris Hansen did to try and just extort money and just to grab cash out of, um, just grab cash out of thin air. He was, he was trying to make money online and this is how Chris Hansen did it. So these are the, yeah, just watch this whole clip. A cameo to promote a phone created by the Chief of Assassinations in the Escobar International Cocaine Trafficking Crime Syndicate? Check. A congratulatory message to a person being accepted into the Epstein pilot program, which bears the name of one of the most prolific predators in history? Check. Promoting a coronavirus killer that has almost no scientific research to back it up? Check. Starring in an infomercial created by one of the most well-known scam artists on the internet? Check using his name and image to promote a debt relief secret scam. Check. Taking $10,000 from a dark money political group to smear a person of Jewish faith as an Semite. Check. So as y'all should have saw in that, in that clip, th those were the most recent ways after the Onision documentary was filmed. Um, it, it would, at, at this time, it was still not uh, on the air yet, but... It was still not on the air yet when um, it was roughly around that time that uh, the Onision documentary was still not um, it was not aired yet on TV. But but after it was filmed, the documentary was filmed. Uh, Chris Hansen did all those things uh, to try and uh, extort more money. Just he was trying to make money um, out there and he was trying to, you know, basically get get people to, you know, give Hanson money and those were the things that he did and they were pretty they were they were pretty bad pretty bad as as you guys should have saw saw there and um overall Chris Hansen's still trying to get money man like he still seems like he's trying to get money is ba basically what it what I really meant he's he's still trying to get money out there and on and on Chris Hansen's YouTube channel, he has over 300,000 subscribers, but his, but his views recently have been dipping and have been averaging anywhere between um, 10,000 views a video to around six to 5,000 views a video. So, so his overall views on his, uh, on his uh, most recent videos have been um, falling dramatically because of all the BS that, um, that cr because of all the BS that Chris Hansen was throwing out there when he was doing his in his little investigations on people when they were really just attention and cash grabs and people saw through his BS and when they finally saw it through Hansen's BS people just stopped watching him his views have been declining so much recently they they've been declining a lot overall and na and nowadays as i just said his videos average around 8000 views per video which is very bad for a youtube channel with over over 325,000 subscribers to have videos that are averaging around that viewer count yeah yeah so he's overall 
he's tr he's um so Chris Hansen is overall trying to get himself um he's trying to get himself back onto TV and, and his views on his uh channel over the recent years have been falling like hell they've been falling a lot so so overall that's pretty much the end of this really long documentary video on Chris Hansen it is quite sad to see that once a beloved kind of a beloved um, TV personality that seemed like he was uh, helping out people in the world. Um, it's overall sad to see that he went from the king of TV at one point to now just a YouTube con man and fraud. He is, he is a con man, a scammer, and he's lied so much that people pretty much stopped believing in this guy and nobody really cares about him anymore. It's overall... It's overall quite sad and such a shame that once a beloved guy out there on TV has now fallen flat on his hiney in recent years and is no longer respected by anybody in the world right now, pretty much. And he's honestly been so desperate and so desperate for money and trying to get himself um, back on the, back on the uh, television spotlight that... He just, he overall has changed his personality and kind of become a goofball and a joke. Uh, uh, just, he's overall become a big joke and a meme nowadays. Like, yeah, um, yeah, he's kind of a meme now. While I don't think Chris Hansen has or ever will learn from his mistakes that he made in the, in the past and, and, and in the future, like, in the past and in the present, he's made a ton of mistakes um, and I don't think he'll, um, I don't think he'll bounce back or learn from them or anything. However, there is one thing to take away in this video that I want y'all to take, to take away from. So, <clears throat> so, so the takeaway in this video, <clears throat> I, I do want you guys to at least know this, um, y you know, just, just to have a little, um, j just so you guys could learn something at the end of this video, um, so, so I do want I do want y'all to know this, and and, and that is that, um, is that more fame and more money does not always mean that people will like you for it. It honestly depends on what you do to earn that money and fame that will make people either like or hate you. And in Hanson's case, every decision that he made to get to the top cost him his reputation. And when your reputation is damaged and when you cost your reputation for something or when it costs your, to, to put it in better words, when it costs your reputation for something, it usually in the end will cost you your, in, your entire career. And that's what happened to Chris Hansen. His fate unfortunately was sealed when he destroyed, he, when he damaged his reputation from the inside out and when he destroyed his career by doing so, by destroying his reputation. So overall, I, I, I don't want any of you guys watching this video right now. I, I don't want, I, I want to make sure that y'all are safe and happy out there and make sure, make, make sure that your reputation does, does not get damaged because you did something stupid online or, or you said something that, that would cost you your reputation. Make sure it's intact and safe and make sure you don't do anything stupid online. I want, uh, I, overall, I just want y'all growing up, uh, growing up having a good life uh, without, with very minimal problems. Don't be like any of these famous people that do stupid stuff that might get them fame in the short term. Uh, however, in the long, however, in the end, um, th those famous people that were, were just being dumb, um, are are just going to end up, you know, running out of money and having people uh, run out of patience with them, which is exactly what happened to Chris Hansen. So overall, just be careful, guys, of what you do on the internet, what you say, um, and what you just say to people in general. Um, don't don't be like Hansen, and don't don't do the thing, don't do the scandalous things that he did throughout throughout his entire career. Yeah, but, but anyways, th that's about, I've had, you know, about enough recording this video. That's about it for this video, y'all. So, sorry if I talked for a really long time. I was just trying to make this, um, I wasn't trying to make this video too long, but of course it, 
I don't know. It's just the way that this video ended. There's a there's overall a ton of information about this guy. I tried to cut cut a lot of it out. This is basically, I don't know. I tried to shorten this video, but 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 overall I really couldn't. And just cuz there's a there's a there's a buttload of information on this Chris Hansen guy. So but anyways, yeah. So that's why this video is long. Um Anyways, I'll see I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this documentary video nonetheless, and hopefully you at least um learned something from this documentary video. Anyways, I'll see y'all in the next one. Goodbye, deuces, peace out, later.